This is Professor Derf Seitz. This Java tutorial demonstrates various math class functions. Here we have our main function and first the absolute value function of the math class. All of these functions are static. You do not need any object of the math class. You just use the class name and then the function name. Our output will be annotated to show the actual code that's being used and the category of functions being tested and then the output. So for absolute value we'll be looking at some positive and negative numbers, their absolute value. It should make them all positive because absolute value is the distance from zero. It's always a positive result. Then the log, which is the natural logarithm, base e, that's the 2.718, etc., irrational number that has certain natural properties. So if we take the math log, that's the natural log, base e, of e itself, there's a constant for e in the math class, Remember, the logarithm is the exponent that you have to raise the base to in order to get the parameter that you're interested in. So it would just the answer will be 1 for that. Then we look at log base 10, which is the log 10 function. And we take log 10 of 1,000. 1,000 is 10 to the third power, so we should get a 3 for that. There's a minimum function, min. We'll take the min of two positive numbers and then to negative numbers because their <clears throat> magnitude uh, becomes a, diff a different kind of effect wh whether they're negative or positive. A max to look at the maximum of two positive and two negative numbers. Power function, power function here f first has the base to use and then the exponent to apply to it. That this would be seven squared, seven to the third power. Then we'll compose the power function with a logarithmic function. So we'll be taking e as the base and its exponent will be a logarithm to base e. And since logarithms and exponentials are inverses of each other, you'll just get back the argument, the parameter that you pass in. And then in the reverse order, we'll be looking at the log, again this is base e, of e to the to a power, so again a composition of a logarithm and an exponential function in the opposite order, again you should get back the argument, the parameter that you pass. Now, if you don't understand all the math, um, just note the, those functions are available that maybe you don't understand yet. Round. There's a math.round which will take a double input and round it to the nearest long integer, you know, a long integer, not a regular int, but a long. If you pass in a float, it'll round it to the nearest int. And the rounding is rounding we're all used to. If it's halfway between at a five point, it's going to round up. Below the halfway point, it's going to round down and above it it will round up as well. The halfway point is called a tie in the API documentation. So we round some some numbers here. We're going to show pi and use it because it has uh, many more fractional digits there to look at. We're going to try rounding pi and then doing some calculations that we'll look at in the output to see if there's some way we can uh, round to something other than a whole number, round to some certain number of fractional digits. And after looking at that and experimenting with it here in the output, we'll show you momentarily a function that was written in this particular example called round to that will take the number and the number of places, decimal places to the right of the decimal that you want to round to and we'll round it to that precision. The trigonometric sine function of some 
0 in pi over 2, which corresponds to 90 degrees, and then 3. Where's pi? Well, there's pi. Pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, and 2 pi. Those are the 90 degree increments around the unit circle. Looking at the sine, which is the y coordinate of the point on the unit circle, it should go 0, 1, 0, negative 1, and back to 0, going through this sequence. Square root of 625, that would be 25. Square root of a negative 1, we'll see what happens there. Um, that would normally be an imaginary number i. Converting back and forth between degrees and radians, to convert from radians to degrees, there's a 2 degrees function. So it's converting from radians, we'll give it some radian measures, pi over 2 and pi in particular, and then converting from degrees back to radians. We'll take 180 and convert it back to radians. Here is the round 2 function that's shown here. It takes a number that's going to be rounded, a double, the number of decimal places that you want to round to, and here's what it does. It takes math power base 10 and to that number of decimal places. So 10 to that number of decimal places, it's called the power of 10 that we want to use in the formula here as a double. Then we're going to call round, first multiplying the number by that power of 10. And remember that's going to uh, return along. Then we're going to divide by the power of 10, which is a double, and that will actually give us what we want, and we'll return that result. Let's run the output now. Here's the output in the console window. First absolute value, absolute value of 3 is 3, and negative 3 is also 3. Natural logarithm log, this is base e of e itself, is 1. Here's base 10 logarithm. Log base 10 of 10 to the third, 1,000, is 3. A minimum, 399 and 400 is 399. Minimum of negative 399 and negative 400 is negative 400. That's further to the left on the real number line. A maximum of these two positive numbers, 400, the max of the negatives is minus 399, further to the right. Powers, 7 squared, 49, 7 to the third, 343. Here we're composing the uh, exponential and logarithmic functions on 77.7, and then the opposite order. On one of them, we get back exactly 77.7. The other, we get extremely close. This is a very, very close uh, answer. This is an example of what I'll call the microscopic errors in the floating point arithmetic. You have to take special precautions when you're dealing with, if you want things, very, very precise differences. But for all practical purposes, this number here is extremely close to 77.7. .7. Rounding. 1.0 just to 1, 1 1.4 to 1, there's the tie, 1.5 halfway between, rounds up to 2, 1.6 also rounds up to 2. We show pi here in its default formatting, of course pi keeps going on forever, but this is a, a good one to work with, with fractional uh, decimal places. First we just round it with the round function, and it rounds to 3. Then we take pi and multiply it by a thousand and round that, and we get 3142. Then we take pi and multiply it by a thousand, round that, and divide by a thousand as a as a double, and we get 3.142. And so that's interesting because it allowed us to get three digits of precision rounding, other than just a whole number rounding. We tried it now with uh, 100,000, which is, uh, let's see, five digits of precision, and it rounds it to that. And that's where, experimentally, we came up with that function, the round two. And so the round two, we take pi 
and seven digits of precision and we have the 927 there and we see the 9265 and that would be 927 so we've created a little alternate rounding other than to the whole number place trigonometric functions sine of zero is zero sine of pi over two which is 90 degrees one sine of pi should be zero again here we have another example of this microscopic floating point error in the functions this is known as e to the negative 16 that's a very 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 small number moves the decimal place over 16 places to the left <clears throat> essentially zero three um, three pi over two that's negative one exactly as it should be and then two pi the same should be zero again again a very extremely sp small number another example of this microscopic error in floating point arithmetic square root of 625 is 25 square root of negative 1 there's a special value that's returned and it's displayed as NAN which means not a number so the square root is intended to return the positive um, I mean square roots of that are not imaginary numbers dealing with things under the radical sign that are zero or greater then converting from radians to degrees pi over 2 is 90 degrees pi is 180 and going the other way the um, degrees to radians 180 degrees is pi and there's pi right there let's go back to our source code now the math class has many more mathematical functions available as static functions but in this tutorial we've looked at the absolute value, the natural log, the base, common logarithm, base 10, min, max, power, exponentials, rounding, the sine, trigonometric sine function, square roots, converting back and forth from degrees into radians. And we see that the math class is very useful for doing our various kinds of mathematical and business calculations.